It's Friday, February 18, and time for your Bobby List Today morning news update. More than two dozen people were injured in a collision between a bus and car at the Brighton Windsor Junction in St. George, just hours after a road safety audit that identified several challenges that could contribute to accidents. Police, fire officers, and personnel from the ambulance service, the Barbados Defence Force, and the Rover Response Team were pressed into action in response to the mass casualty that occurred around 7.15 last evening. Senior Superintendent of Police Margaret Stephen updated reporters at the scene. We had about 25 persons injured, uh, eight persons um, reported they're suffering from head, chest, and neck injuries, and they are in the process of being transported to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The others would be assessed on scene, and they also will receive medical attention. Uh, investigations are continuing right now. We will brief you further. Early in the day, police officers revealed that shoddy road signage, poor lighting, and debris left on the roadside were among the major challenges reported by road users, and in some cases, blame for senseless traffic accidents. Deputy Commandant at the Police Training Center, Christine Stanford, who conducted a two-week collision investigation course and her team, took to the streets to look at the country's road conditions and to speak with motorists. Motorist behavior certainly can improve. Some of them too are frustrated. They're, they're complaining about the roads and the infrastructure. And sometimes they don't see anything being done, but things are being done slowly. And this is the first part in an effort to have something done. And one of the key issues the motorists are complaining about is poor lighting. So we are also going to look at that area and also make recommendations through the motorists to the authorities to see what else can be done in a speedy or timely manner. Facilitator of the course, Acting Sergeant Andrew Sandiford, who is attached to the District A Police Station's Collision Investigations Department, also underscore the need to balance vigilance by road users with good road conditions. Some of the accidents are caused mainly by the road users being impatient. Then you have to look at some of the signage. Some of the signage are faded, so motorists are unsure of which direction to, to turn at these junctions. Um, and I guess after this exercise, what type of recommendations will you make to either the MPW or uh, whoever is in charge to alleviate some of these problems? Well, having compiled the information, when we put it together and we recognize what most motorists are complaining of, then we will be able to recommend some of these changes that we believe will help the road. In other news, Head of Isolation Facilities Dr. Corey Ford is pleading with Barbadians to get their grandparents vaccinated and then boosted against the virus. He made the appeal on Thursday as he expressed grave concern about the continued high death rate associated with COVID-19 among the elderly population. I think where you have your elderly granny in the home or your, gra your mother, or other elderly people, maybe your elderly aunt, etc., in the home population, we know in this country at present that there being a relaxation in some of the, the protocols across the country. But as we do that, I think we as country people need not to only think about ourselves and the ability for us to go out and do things that we have not done, certainly within the last year, or for some, some instances, the last two years, but we need to recognize that they're elderly people and they have multiple comorbidities and the risk to them um, can be high. And so I really want to pay, pay special attention to that. But to take it a bit further, apart from being our brother's keeper or our family keeper, we also need to do a few things. So apart from checking in on them, we need to check their vaccination status. If you have them on there and they're not vaccinated, I'm begging you, please you know, try to get them vaccinated. And the important part, getting them boosted. Prime Minister Mia Motley returned home from a four-day working visit to Guyana with news that Barbados will benefit from a wide range of trade, investment and other initiatives. Just after touching down at the Grantley Adams International Airport on Thursday, Prime Minister Motley, in a report to the country, identified the potential for reduced food prices as one area in which Barbados stands to benefit. If we can reduce the price of food, particularly healthy food, then we believe that we can add serious value. And of course, Guyana and Suriname have much uh, more land than we do, and they all have um, access to fresh water. So we are talking about not only training, expanded production, both in crop and livestock, 
um, and then using Barbados as a logistics hub in order to be able to supply not just the Barbados market, but other markets regionally and internationally. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Jamaica's Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee says a lack of leadership, coordination and political will are helping to drive crime in inner city communities across the country. TVJ's Herman Green reports. With the authorities announcing two new crime initiatives, Operation Get Every Illegal Gun and a new anti-gang task force in the past two weeks, the Crime Consensus Monitoring and Oversight Committee, CMOC, is again calling for more focus to be placed on addressing issues in troubled communities. CMOC's community representative, Milton Tomlinson, suggests that these communities are ready and desirous of change. He pointed to the usual spike in murders that precedes such initiatives. But yet, when an entity, an organization, an agency are moving to a community to carry out whatever intervention, they are always welcome. So it tells a story. You know, it tells a story about leadership and the type of leadership and the will. Because we need, we need as a people, as communities, to have that political will from the both political parties and the commitment to move this community um, in a big way, um, more than just um, the Zozos, um, police carding and searching and that. CMOC chairman Lloyd Distant acknowledged the number of entities making efforts in communities affected by crime. On the international scene, at least 104 people have died in the historic Brazilian mountain town of Petropolis, local government officials reported on Thursday. This after heavy rains caused mudslides that buried homes, flooded the streets and washed away cars and buses. Scenes of destruction as heavy rains and mudslides hit. The deluge struck the city of Petropolis leaving scores dead and many homeless. When this fell, I pulled my mother and only one girl in the bar managed to get out. We went up that street and got into a neighbor's house where I saw all the houses falling like an avalanche. Everything fell at once, something absurd. I never thought I'd see this in my life. A number of survivors were found as searchers picked through the wreckage, with civilians joining in the efforts. The state fire department said the area received as much rain in three hours on Tuesday as in the previous 30 days combined. The team works 24 hours a day. They will not stop the search at all. It will continue unless for technical reasons it has to stop for one or two hours. But if everything goes normal, we won't stop at all. Petropolis's population has grown haphazardly over the years, with many tightly packed residences and inadequate drainage. The mountain region has seen similar catastrophes in the past, but plans to reduce the risk of landslides have been advancing slowly. The City Hall has declared three days of mourning. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.